as the local foods movement got bigger and bigger, it turned out that some major corporations decided that they were going to alter their buying patterns based on food miles. So some of our customers are on the East Coast, which is a long way away from Northwest Arkansas. And well, they, they actually found another big major corporation uh, that grows mushrooms. And since it was closer, what they did is they stopped buying from us, a local family farm. And in our situation, we're a family farm. We employ us and two other families. So to ha and that was a third of our business that they just dumped us. A family farm, if it's in the Midwest, it's still part of the local food system because not all the farmland is right near the city. And part of the local food movement needs to support family farms no matter where they are in the country. It turns out in our situation, this farm is so ideal for shiitakes. It, it's unbelievable. So we have a very unique ideal climate and there's other people in Arkansas that just are not gonna be able to grow you know, the way we can because of our farm. And you can't translate this to closer to the city. You know, this is where it's happening. So basically when you pick these, you just twist them right off. These actually pop right off. And uh, certain people, picking was never my strong point. Carol's a faster picker than I am. I, I would usually try and get out of picking and go to log moving as quick as I could. Now these will double every day. So the ones I'm leaving will be twice as big tomorrow morning. We do mostly a uh, winter sort of strain that, uh, because that's when our highest markets are. And um, we, they drill and plug them and then we put them out in the woods in the laying yards like we looked at yesterday and they just sit until, uh, until they're ripened and uh, ready to go or more than ready to go depending on uh, how much chaos we want to deal with. The cycle is we purchase the logs which most of them would have rotted anyway from the immediate area. We drill and plug them. We grow the mushrooms until they're spent or the logs get to the point where it's not worth fruiting them anymore. And then they go into the firewood pile. And uh, when we're done with the firewood, they're wood ashes and we spread them on the field. So the stuff that's flowering is the worst. And you can see there's only just, you know, one flower there. So anything that's above ground. Oh, this is some beautiful watercress. Yeah, it's so there's uh, snakes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and if it's moving fast, it's probably a cotton mouth. We're going to make a soup, potato soup, and then blend that watercress we picked into it. And then put the, some grilled mushrooms on top. So that should be pretty good, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pour the stock into here, and then we're going to let those potatoes cook all the way through. Normally when you cook mushrooms, it's good to put the, the salt on towards the end because it draws out all the moisture. Um, so if you're sauteing them in the pan, you don't want them to boil. But if you're putting them on the grill, then getting some of that moisture out is not a bad thing at all. So you can, with the grilled mushroom, put on the salt, not at the end. Um, but so we added oregano and some fresh garlic or green garlic and some salt a lot of olive oil and a little bit of rice. Well, you can use any vinegar really, or a sweeter vinegar. 
Let's add some of that and mix it all together. It'll be great. Look at that. What a place to barbecue. Okay. <laughs> what are them hillbillies doing on the porch? <laughs> <laughs> Don't they At know it's great? Not taking a <laughs> Completely kicked that there, I the did. one shot. <laughs> oh, I loved it.